Hey, it's Joseph here. I have shared some ways to create randomized but controlled arrays of components in SketchUp in my last video. You might want to check out that video by clicking over here. And today I'm sharing how to make image like this and this out of SketchUp using V-Ray Cloud and Photoshop. First of all, I have uploaded the thousand paper crane model into 3D Warehouse. So you can find the link in the description to get that model downloaded. And once you get in there, you can just go ahead and download that model. And then once you have downloaded, you can just go ahead and open up that SketchUp file. And let's go ahead and inspect the model a little bit. And the first thing I would like to note is the fact that I have changed the field of view a bit. You can go to camera and field of view and you can confirm the field of view is 60 degree it's normally 35 degrees just to make the scene a bit more dynamic i have made it into 60 degree instead of going to camera and field of view you can also just hit z or z if you're across the pond and then your cursor will change to magnifying glass as you can see here and then you can also type in the field of view degrees so in my case i can just type in 60 DEG enter and then it's just going to turn into 60 degree field of view or you can just go ahead and click on the scene so I can consistently start from this point of view and another thing to note is that I have sort of left a void here I didn't really delete any of the cranes what I've done was just sort of move around and see the point where you will have a bit of void in the middle which was here so I have sort of parked there and you can just go find that spot by just clicking on that scene again then you probably have noticed that the image has very dark background whether it be this one or this one has sort of a dark background so just to visualize better you can change the background into darker color so what you need to do is in the styles dialog and then just click on edit and then make sure you click on the third one which is the background settings so click on that and then change the background from white to much darker gray. Now, if you make it completely black, you will notice all the edges become white. If you have made that mistake, you can just put it back to darker gray and then also go back to edge settings and then change the color of the edge to black. So there you go. I have saved up sort of a darker background. I'm gonna hit this once so that I update the style. And then once I go back here, then I should be able to find that same camera or the scene spot with much darker background. And before jumping onto the rendering process, we want to gauge how the shadow might look like in your scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the shadow. If I just click on this, I'm going to turn on the shadow. And one thing to note is that another thousand of cranes will appear here, which is the shadow of these cranes. And what the SketchUp is doing is that it's casting shadow on the ground. So if you uncheck this, the shadow of the cranes will Will disappear the v-ray will not cast shadow anyways because there's no geometry at the bottom so this will be more accurate representation to so go here and turn on the shadow so uncheck on ground and then make sure you right click this and update so once that is updated you will be able to see what the shadow will do to your scene you can see kind of shadow going there and there i generally don't really advise turning on the shadow when you're saving up a sketchup file or updating the scene because it can take very long time to load for heavier models so what i will do is i'll just turn off because we're finished gauging how that looks like and then update again. If you really want to avoid using V-Ray because you don't have a license, then you can just turn on the shadow file export to the graphic and just make sure you go to options and put down much higher pixels on the width so something like 6000 will do and okay that and export and once exported the image will look something like this which is not bad at all but the shadows are very sharp and i want a bit more softer touch to this if this image suits you you can certainly work off of this however i'm gonna proceed with v-ray cloud rendering service so in order to use the v-ray cloud service you need to sign up for the beta testing and you can sign up by going 
going to chaosgroup.com slash vray slash cloud and I'll leave the link in the description for you to follow and you can just click on join beta for signing up for the beta testing. You would also need working copy of vray for SketchUp on your machine so you can talk to the cloud server and send the information. Make sure you go ahead and log into vray.cloud. If you click on enter and then you should be able to sign in with your username and password and once you do so you can go ahead and download the client app so download for windows 64 bit and once that is downloaded i can just go ahead and run that installer and then from then on it's pretty much i agree and everything and then finish so after doing that you can send it out to the cloud however i want to touch up some of the settings before sending it out and as i have mentioned in my previous v-ray video it is kind of good idea to wipe your v-ray stuff out of your model so that you are starting from the clean state you don't know where your file has been at and what sort of settings that it has been dialed in so we're going to go ahead and do that so if you go extensions and then v-ray and there's going to be tools and then just go find wipe V-Ray data from the project and yes, yes. And once you have done that, all the V-Ray data has been wiped and then go ahead and go to settings. If you haven't really wiped, at least run this reset setting so that you have reset in value of these render settings. On this flyout, what I do want is under the global illumination, I wanna turn on ambient occlusion so that I get better edges, as well as if I just turn on denoiser, you'll see that the denoiser comes on. And then if I go to render output, I want something more than 800. However, we are not rendering off of the machine, so that is completely fine. And once you have done that, one thing to keep in mind is that when I turn on the shadow, the shadows were very sharp, and V-Ray will do the same unless we dial in some different values. So we want to have sort of the softer shadow as you saw in my image. You see the shadow a bit softer on the edges. So in order to do that, you go to light settings and in the sunlight, you just go find size multiplier and then just drag that all the way up, which is 10 there. So at this point, if I go ahead and do test render, so there is a bit of a softer shadow there and there's a composition, the void, but we are certainly going to send to the cloud and ramp up the resolution, not 800 by 450. So this is a right moment to bring up why I should use V-Ray Cloud. I think it makes a good case because you don't have to have a machine that's really powerful to do renderings very quick. My machine is capable of rendering this up fairly quickly. However, if I were to be on my laptop, on the go, somewhere outside, where I don't have a time to sit there, wait for my machine to render up. And given it is a laptop, often it is a lot slower. And V-Ray Cloud, as long as you have internet connection, you can just send it off to the cloud from your laptop and wait for the result later. So you can do little test renders like this on a low resolution to just see what your renders are gonna look like and then send it away in much larger resolution and pick it up much later. And you can actually see the process in your smartphones as well as the laptops or any other hardware that has sort of the internet service and see the process of the cloud rendering. And also because this cloud machine is probably faster than your machine, it may actually render a lot quicker than your machine would. So back to the process. So if I was here doing the low resolution test renders with my machine and I can go ahead and close that and then just find the cloud button. And then my browser will open up this dialog automatically. A job name, a thousand paper cranes, that's fine. And I want that to be a new project name. So a thousand paper cranes. And instead of 800 by 450 of test render results, I want sort of the 4K. So it's 3840 pixels. And then as soon as I click on here, it's just going to calculate 2160, which is 16 by 9 ratio. Render mode is progressive. Output format is PNG and JPEG. And it's not going to be virtual reality or animation. So I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to submit. And V-Ray will upload the model. And then job is successfully scheduled for rendering. View job. And when you view the job, it's going to go ahead and tell you the status of that job. Render time. And you'll be able to see the process just like how you would see it on your frame buffer. And like I said, you can also monitor this on your mobile phone. So just go ahead and type vray.cloud. 
And once I am in there, I can just go ahead and enter, sign in, and I should be able to monitor the progress tap on it. So the render time is counting. So you should be able to monitor your progress as well here. And once the process is finished, you should get an email notification or you get little notification showing up on your window screen. So I can just click on here, render time and it is completed. And there's gonna be a little cloud download button and you can just click on that and the zip file will download. And once that has finished downloading, so in here I'll have these four files saved up. So let's briefly go back to SketchUp and then also try and get the outline file off of it. I need to turn off the shadows and I can go to view, face style and do hidden line. And then let's make the background completely white again. So we'll just click on this one and then background to complete white. So now I have a scene where it has only the outlines of the model. At this point, file, export, 2D graphic. And then I'm just going to save another file that says a thousand paper cranes. And I'm going to say underscore lines. And then make sure you have meaningful resolution like 6,000 there. Okay export and once that is exported i'm going to move that file into this folder so that they're all nicely together so all the images are ready to go i just need photoshop to edit them once you have photoshop what you need to do is just find this effects result png and just drop it onto photoshop and i actually want this image to be smart layer so i'm going to drop it off again and that will fit here and they just hit enter. So that comes in as a smart layer and I can just go ahead and delete. And then go back to the folder and just drag and drop this lines file. And here, one thing to remember is that we have dialed in 3840 pixels across on the resolution dialog. So that's what we need to do. So find width dialog here and then we're gonna type in 3x40 and then px. So that makes it that amount of pixels across. And then you're just gonna hit this link button here and then enter once and twice to accept. So now it has been aligned perfectly. So what you need to do is go ahead and change to multiply and then you can see the outline is lining up. However, the outlines are looking a bit too strong so I can lower the opacity by just dragging on opacity or just typing in something like 50%. And now the background is showing so I just need to create a new layer by clicking here and then just drag that layer all the way bottom and then make sure your default color is black. You can just hit control and backspace and it's gonna be complete white. And then if you actually do alt backspace, and then it will turn completely black. Now I actually don't really want it complete black. So I'm just gonna select something like a darker gray and then hit alt backspace again. So once you have done that, I can just drop in my logo file in there. So I'm actually interested in this specific layer. So I can just right click and duplicate layer. And once the dialogue shows up, I can just say, this one here, okay. And then that layer has come in onto this corner. So I just need to make sure it stays above the black one, but below the cranes. And then V for move tool here. And then I can just drag and then place it somewhere in the center like so. And then I kind of want the vignette effect where it is sort of a darker on the edges. So just click on the top layer there and create another layer and make sure you got the black. So click on black there and then same process alt backspace to fill in the color and then mask it away and then hit e for eraser tool use the brackets to make it slightly larger and then hold down alt key and then use your right mouse button up and down to make hardness to zero so i want it somewhere there and then if i hit there once you're gonna see the vignette effect Maybe that is just too much on either side and there and there. It still is very dark, but we are going to reduce that amount to go back here and just click on that layer and then and reduce the opacity by just moving your mouse and scrubbing on opacity text there. So there you go. And actually the color of the cranes are kind of off from my logo. And in my case, I decided to make it not really saturated with any color so that it is not conflicting with my logo. So if you look here, I just made it either desaturated or just don't have any logo, but keep the colorful cranes here. If I go back to Photoshop, I can go ahead and make them desaturated by selecting this layer and then clicking on this adjustment layer 
and then hit hue slash saturation and then just move this slider over here so that you make it desaturated now if you do that you notice the logo is going too so you can just clip it onto the layer below only and then effectively you can make that sort of effect so once you have done that um, that is good to go if you want the another version and then you can just disable the specific adjustment layer also disable this logo and then perhaps you can also change the tone of these cranes so Go ahead and select this layer again and then adjustment layer hue saturation and what you can do is just move this slider so if i move it slightly i can just kind of go to more of this tone or i can go here and then make it orangey and what's been discussed on my previous video was a pink perhaps lighter pink by going this way as well as the lightness there you go you can change it to pink if you would like but in my case, I'm going to keep it with my logo. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then you can just go file and save as. So that was a brief tutorial on how to visualize SketchUp model using V-Ray Cloud as well as editing with Photoshop. I hope you have enjoyed the content. If you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching this type of videos. And do you have any questions? I'm happy to answer any of your questions if you leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.